the fun and freedom of Audrey Hepburn and her glorious outfits in Roman Holiday, the story of a princess who throws off her conventional lifestyle for a little time of fun and frolics in Rome <laughs> with Gregory Peck <laughs> has captured imaginations for years. I think it's one of the most popular films of all time and certainly one of my absolute favourites. And you know what can beat that image of Audrey Hepburn in her pretty blouse and flouncy skirt on a Vespa with Gregory Peck in Rome. <laughs> I think it speaks to many a woman's fantasy. <laughs> Certainly does to mine. <laughs> so, this outfit, which looks so simple, but like many a simple outfit, actually is very cleverly made. And I'm using this wonderful pattern from the Winterstone Pattern Company for the blouse, which looks simple, but actually there's some really nifty and clever darts and tucks that produce that apparently very casual blouse with a rather wonderful <laughs> neckline. And then I also use this old pattern the old pattern. <laughs> this vintage pattern that I have, it's a vintage Vogue pattern and I realised I didn't really need to use it, it's basically a half circle skirt but actually I'm glad I did and I, like you'll see, I think it made for a really rather lovely skirt. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the making of this outfit and as well as my reveal of my Roman holiday outfit, I'm also going to be showing you the blouse made up in a different style by Arietta, Miss Arietta from Instagram. So again you get to see two versions of the blouse and I shall get on with it. So I've laid out the pattern pieces and pinned them down onto this really pretty, I suppose like a kind of ballet pink cotton fabric. So you can see there are different sleeve options, there's the long sleeve, the short sleeve and there's this three quarter sleeve and although I thought Audrey was wearing that version in the film actually you can see she's kind of really rolled up her shirt so I'm going for this three quarter length sleeve version which is kind of my favourite sleeve length anyway and the blouse also comes with this cummerbund but I'm not going to do the cummerbund in the ballet pink I'm going to do it in the skirt fabric I thought that would actually be even prettier so for the blouse front it's all cut in one the sleeve the body of the bodice and the collar and I've cut the sleeve here for the three quarter view but it's cut here for the shorter view and there's a section that I've cut off if, which I've saved in case I want to do the wrist length version. So that is the front of the blouse. Then if I move over here we can see the back of the blouse which is that dip back yoke and you can see where that's going to be gathered into the yoke piece and then this gorgeous shape that the collar forms at the back there you kind of have to put your hair up or something don't you so you want to show off that shape of course Audrey had just had her rebellious haircut I'm just going to cut out these pieces now and then for the skirt I've got this gorgeous sky blue cotton linen mix and I'm going to use this pattern. It's a Vogue pattern with this wonderful floaty skirt, so much like the one that Audrey Hepburn wore in Roman Holiday. And I just wanted to show you, having looked inside this pattern, you can see the titty paper with the old markings, i.e. just the perforations. And normally I do trace round, but this is such a simple pattern but involves so much paper. I don't think I will. And just to show you, it is in fact a half circle skirt. So uh, you just literally cut one back 
piece which is kind of pretty well well is exactly the same <laughs> as the front piece with the center back and front marked there and the straight of grain running across there and then there are literally just two other pieces the waistband and the belt so it's really simple and it wasn't really anything to stop me drafting it myself but I there's something about these gorgeous old patterns to me and it didn't cost me very much and it has this wonderful little you know blurb on the back you know whether you choose a Vogue Paris original model or a Vogue Couturier design or a Vogue special design or a regular Vogue pattern the clothes you make from them will be wearable and fashion right this year and the year after a tribute to your good taste it's nice to be told that isn't it and a credit to Vogue and I also bought from the same seller I mean this isn't really to do with this outfit really but I just thought I would show you it was irresistible the Royal Academy of Dancing tunic and panties for major examinations of course Audrey was a dancer and actually I have been known to dance myself but you made up this little outfit of tunic and panties in in white I think and then according to whether you were if you were elementary you had a royal blue sash and if you were intermediate you had a scarlet sash and isn't that rather wonderful for those dancers of the 1950s anyway I shall get on with cutting out the skirt so before I start sewing I thought I'd show you the front of the blouse so the front section here which is going to be folded in but I wanted to show you all the darts of which there are quite a few and they're there I think to form that sort of billowy blouse shape so there's this dart which is a strange one that I always think when I find it it's called a fisheye dart and I'll show you it on the pattern so it's that shape and that is made through both the fabric of the blouse front and the interfacing parts so that's ready to be sewn there then there's also a little underarm dart or then at the base of the blouse two darts shaped like that tucks I guess they would better be called that fan out so when that start narrower and become bigger they're going to create a kind of poofy balloony part in the main section of the blouse so I'm going to sew those tucks and darts in place now oh and I'll show you the back of the blouse too the back is going to have lots of these tucks I've marked them as you can see with tailor's tacks and I'm just going to snip through and then the lines are joined and stitched through I stitched the fisheye darts and I stitched the tucks in the front and back of the blouse so here is the back of the blouse with the tucks all stitched and pressed away from the center seam I used the selvage edge of the fabric so it shouldn't fray I'm going to do French seams in other places but where I can use the selvage edge I always do so there's the selvage edge at the straight back the three tucks either side of the center back pressed out to the sides and you can see it's forming that fluffy shape across the back and then if I bring the blouse down a little see that the top of the blouse back is just gathered uh, around that edge there for the yoke piece to 
bit over the top and that will just be top stitch you can see that I've pressed under six millimeters along that yoke edge and that's just going to be matching the markings either side and then top stitch over the back so you can see how the shape of the blouse is starting to form and I'm just like matching the center of the yoke to the center back of the blouse and then the two markings either side and then adjusting the gathers to fit the yoke between those points. I top stitched the yoke to the back of the blouse. So here we are, the yoke stitched to the blouse back, top stitched around there and you can see just a kind of little bit of gathering and then joining the tuck shape just to create that kind of blousey back. The back is very really straightforward but the front needs a bit more <laughs> thinking about. So this is the front. You can see the collar that's going to roll back once the facing is in place. Now I'll show you the, the pattern piece so that you can see the thing. So the centre back seam, which we're used to being, you know, a kind of long seam in the back. The centre back seam, there's actually a centre back seam on the front and it's this short little seam here. I mean, thank goodness they've labelled it. And actually, it is a really key design feature. So you want this short seam here, which I've stitched in place there the various darts and tucks in the front so there's the fisheye darts you can just see those there and they will that's it and you can see how that will then join the seam that's clipped in just at the shoulders there so that fisheye dart, very similar to what happened on the walk away dress, it's quite a 50s thing, just feeds into that seam line and then there's the, there is the underarm darts that you can see there and of course the tucks. So it's quite a shaped blouse and not fitted but shaped to create that kind of very blousey <laughs> 50s shape. So now the front pieces are literally just attached at that centre back seam and, it, and they now need to be attached to the back. I want to do French seams wherever possible so I've laid the back wrong side facing upwards and I'm now going to pin and baste the front so that I can do both the shoulder seams and you can see how the back piece will wrap around that neck edge there and then the shoulder seams will be pinned up and of course clipping into that corner for ease there so I'm just going to pin that all together and baste that together and then machine stitch the French seams. Actually I just wanted to show you this shape at the neck edge. So this, so that's the back neck edge, this is the front neck edge and you can see the different shapes and let's press that seam open but the idea is that you want this to stand up uh, you can see the shape that it's starting to form there. You want it to just sort of stand up. So that's why when I pin this around, it will encourage the collar to just stand upright in that 50 shape. That makes sense. I'll just show you again the different flat hat flat, the different shapes that are formed. So with the back curving around like that and the front piece curving around like that 
but once they're stitched together that's what's going to encourage it to fold upwards and form that shape you want. So I've sewn the shoulder seams and the underarm seams to connect the front to the back and I've also sewn on the facing to the front so you can see I've stitched it around the edges there and then turned it in to, and pressed to start forming that do the better press really <laughs> to start forming that collar shape and so all it needs now along the front is to have the buttons and of course the bound button holes luckily only three stitched down the front so I need to find some buttons and then it will turn like that that very distinctive colour and then the sleeves so I need three quarter sleeves and they're just gathered around and then there is a cuff and a sleeve band so the cuff is interfaced and stitched right side to right side and then turned to face the right way round and then the cuff is turned and pushed over the sleeve. The instructions on the pattern were actually quite confusing, so I referred back to, well, I just remembered how I'd done my uh, bolero for the walkaway dress. And what that involves, so you, you put the, you make up the cuff, this inner edge is still raw edges, and then you sandwich the sleeve band this one over machine stitch around so you have sandwiched the cuff between the sleeve and the band and then you turn the cuff round like here to the inside and push it down and then you slip stitch the sleeve in place so so you've got that very distinctive cuff so all I need to do now is do the buttonholes and the buttons and the hemming and then this blouse will be ready to show you. So I wanted to show you the skirt too in this lovely duck egg blue colour. So there's actually only two pieces of the skirt and they are each a quarter circle so the skirt is a half circle in all and then you literally cut off the corner to create the waist of the skirt and works perfectly and uh, I put a zip in I used the selvage edge of the skirt to put in a zip so that's all ready so I just need to put a waistband on the skirt and then the blouse pattern then the blouse pattern has a cummerbund and I thought I would cut the cummerbund out of the blue fabric the skirt really simple just has a straightforward waistband zip closure hooks and eyes and I decided to make a cummerbund which is a very 50s thing I follow the instructions in the blouse pattern but I made the cummerbund out of the skirt fabric and what you do anyone can do it without a pattern you just turn I'm taking it to the underside you turn under the edges all round turn it under twice machine stitch round it's very very quick and then in the dead in the center you do three rows of gathering stitches pull them up machine stitch over the gathers to secure them down and then do a couple of rows of gathering stitches at each end and machine stitch over and you have a cummerbund however I haven't sewn the closures on because I wasn't sure how well this back worked and I actually want to mount it onto a proper belt so I'll keep the cummerbund but mount it onto a belt and basically I've run out of time <laughs> before I need to get my video out so I'm going to pin it uh, pin it centre back for the moment and 
hope that you will understand that the cumber band is a work in progress but I'll fiddle around with it and get the shape pretty and, and then mount it onto a proper belt I think. Just to show you the details of the blouse before I put it on, it only has three buttons and I've used these pretty Grave Mother of Pearl buttons and then if I pull it down you can see that the collar forms this very distinctive shape and I chose to do the three quarter view sleeves because I felt like the cuff of the sleeves really echoes the very 50s pointy shape of the collar and I find three quarter length sleeves very flattering too. And I thought I would join one of my furry friends in the garden, although the weather in the UK is still very odd so I apologise for a strange kind of light effects in this video which were caused by rain and sun, rain and sun but I still thought it would be nicer to show you the blouse and skirt outdoors and there I'm just showing you the back you can see that really distinctive neckline of the blouse at the back and I just tied on a little kerchief because of course Audrey had one on in the film. I think it has the space to be red but I, I didn't seem to have a nice spotty red kerchief so I but I did manage a spotty blue kerchief and you can see how this is just a really especially the blouse really such a 50s shape and you can wear that blouse neckline kind of up or just kind of uh, roll it down a little and it sits on the top of the shoulders it's a really unusual shape to see in a blouse today very distinctively 50s and you can see how my little pointy cuffs echo that colour and I'm really thrilled with the skirt. I feel like I could wear different versions of this skirt all the time. It's like the easiest skirt imaginable to wear. Just really flattering, very easy. Yes, she she says don't leave me out of your videos. You've been doing that a bit lately. I can't be doing with it. Well why do you, what would she look like in this card? Oh, beautiful. Oh, yet it does suit her, doesn't it? It's, yes, very fetching. She's kind of wishing she hadn't come out now. And yes, I just wanted to show you the, the blouse without the kerchief. And you can see that 50 shaping. And even though it's got that kind of poofiness at the back this blouse it's fitted um, around the waist area so it's not like a modern blouse that might just bag out at the back any old how uh, with the 50s you're controlling exactly how much it puffs out at the back with those tucks and it also means you don't have lots of fabric collecting around your kind of middle tummy area as you would in a modern blouse where you kind of tuck it in all those tails it? and it sort of forms a kind of lumpy bit over your stomach but the the these vintage blouses really are properly fitted I've seen somebody's left the kerchief in a plant so I thought I'd put it back on again and fabric wise I have to say although I love the colour of the blouse the fabric was a nightmare to sew with it was really really I guess closely woven could hardly get a pin through or a needle through and when you did it really left a hole like just pinning the fabric left holes in the fabric and it was really tough on the fingers to hand stitch as well on the other hand the cotton linen mix fabric for the skirt was an absolute joy to sew with joy to wear 
Uh, they both came, both fabrics came from the cloth house. And now stay tuned to watch Arietta model her blouse and she has shown off the back really well so have a look. And I think Arietta's blouse looks lovely and she's shown so well in her video that kind of neckline at the back and the kind of poofiness at the back and you can see she's done the short sleeve version and used those wonderful vintage buttons. Exciting news is that Arietta will be starting her own YouTube channel and she does some gorgeous vintage sewing and all kinds of vintage glamour content so a wonderful channel to watch and I will certainly be watching and since I have one I will link her YouTube channel in my description below but I'll also put up a community post so you don't miss it and you can find her on Instagram as Miss Ariatisha so that's wonderful news and she has some rather gorgeous cats <laughs> I know a lot of you out there love animals like <laughs> we do and thank you so much for watching and commenting and all the people that encourage me it does make a world of difference to me it's actually <laughs> i'm a nightmare it does actually mean an awful lot to me and i'm really really <laughs> grateful so i shall look forward to seeing you all next week <laughs> bye